Hello my soccer universe, it is way too late, but too many good games to watch today. Um, I probably can make it easily half an hour video, I wanna try to keep it short and questions where to start, I mean let's start here, Italy, I mean I've been, as I'm wearing Milan, you can already guess, Milan has won, I'm very happy but it was a dirty win against Sassuolo. Oh, Sassuolo gave a lot of trouble. Uh, if it was over Donnarumma and a really great defending, I think this would have gone the other way. I think even um, three months ago, Milan would have lost that game. Um, Piontek was almost a no-show because he never got in position. I mean, yes, he had uh, contacts, but he never got in position. But I have to say that on the other side, Milan had the initiative, but Sassuolo really on the counter attack always dangerous and i remember one great save by donnarumma early and yeah um sloppy play in a way um the goal came from corner kick where i think it was piontek on musakio uh trying to head it in kind of, um being in each other's way and I just want to see that I get the name right. And then in the end it is an own goal by um, Lirola that uh, gets Milan the lead at halftime. I want to say at halftime it probably was still somewhat justified than the second half. I mean, not that I've, I was nervous. I mean, and notice that uh, Sassuolo was pressing that much, but it was always Milan on the counter attack, and they didn't counter that well. And the big one was the, when there was a long ball, and Consili, the goalkeeper of Sassuolo, misjudged it, and um, Piantek would have run past him. He pulled him down. Got the red card, which was reviewed. I really like how the referee, I mean, he reviewed it again, and I thought he might not get sent off, but then. Out with you. That was a cool <laughs> see, sequence. But the, the, it was never safe and they didn't uh, run good counter attacks. It was a little bit like uh, the Lazio game earlier this week. In defense, Milan, great. Really good. Uh, going forward, there are some troubles at the moment. Other games in Serie A, I barely saw anything. Uh, Empoli, Parma, only 3-3. Three, three. Parma going uh, taking three times the lead. Empoli three times equalizing. Um, I saw maybe two minutes of that, which was had a, uh, the penalty goal that made 2-2 two, two for Empoli. And then, of course, the big Rome Darby, which I also didn't see much. I saw two, the two goals because it was the same time as El Clasico, and I will get to that next. Uh... But yeah, Caicedo gets the early goal, which was a really nicely played count, counter like all a nicely weighted pass uh, through the defense, uh, could almost around the goalkeeper, then empty goal, it makes it 1-0. Uh, Roma then had chances uh, and was kind of pressing for the equalizer. I saw also Zaniolo came off uh, injured, which <laughs> hope he will be ready for the Champions League against Porto, more of of this team uh, later as well and yeah uh, i think a one big one by florenzi that was uh, a huge chance uh, that i saw but then counter-attack and Lazio gets a penalty mobile is lots at home at that moment i didn't watch then any, any, anymore and cataldi in the 89th makes it in uh, three nil for lazio so that's a huge uh, result and if you had asked ask me, I wanted to see a draw, a more likely or a Roma win, but you know, if I see from a million perspective, a draw, but you know, everything's going fine. You and Napoli play tomorrow. Inter now in fourth, Milan in third, 48-47. I mean, I said yesterday it will be a difficult uh, task to uh, beat. So solo and it was a difficult task. Speaking of Inter, I saw the highlights this morning and yes, I forgot to mention that there were, I mean, I said Inter was pressing. I didn't see almost anything from the second half on the, on the last three minutes, which I wish I would have connected further. Uh, there were pretty big chances for Inter, and most notably Borjo Valero. I mean, he, if he gets the ball on goal, it's, a two, it's uh, the equalizer. 
but then uh, Cali they got a penalty and they I mean um, the worst miss you've ever seen. But yeah, Cagliari hang, hang on and Mille grazie Cagliari. Milan is in third spot, something I didn't think I will see this season. Honestly, for me it was Juve Napoli in the ahead and the Milan, Roma, Lazio and many others will uh, fight for fourth spot. It's a race for third spot, maybe. Uh, Darby coming up soon though, two weeks from now. Uh, Roma 44, nice three points behind Inter and Lazio three points behind Roma. And we have a, few, a slate of games to be played. So let's see, um, Empoli gets a point that gives them a little bit cushion over Bologna, but you know, if Bologna wins, they're just one point behind. Uh, Parma also cannot do much with that one point, and um, Sassuolo is a mid table team. Okay, El Clasico. Um, before that, there were a few more games in Spain. Espanyol uh, Valladolid uh, was a 3 1 um, game. Villarreal against Alaves 1 2. Huesca Sevilla I saw the last few minutes, and that was actually crucial <laughs> uh, between Huesca and Sevilla 2 1 because the winning goal came in the 98th minute. And they had to look at it, and it looked a little bit fishy. But that Sevilla is in a really, really tough spot. Alaves, though. Winning 2-1 at Villarreal, Alaves and Getafe. They're taking now uh, um, the slip-ups by Sevilla and we might actually see Alaves next year in the Champions League, uh, mind you. But let's talk about Classico. Um, in a way it was great that those two had just seen each other and they played this, the game again because it was uh, much more intense, much more frantic pace going up and down without being you know it was maybe not too gripping but ah, gripping it was gripping um and i thought there was a lot more movement i mean the first half from wednesday was kind of a boringish because they tried to fill each other out they didn't need to do this uh it was much more um attack minded and yeah, uh, Real Madrid again took the initiative and again had more of the game. But then there was a huge chance by Messi, which I thought will go in. And then they make the 1 0 in the 26th minute through uh, Rakitic, uh, which, you know, <laughs> I loved it. The commentators say, yeah, Barcelona is playing a little bit slow, uh, all for a 0 0 at that moment as a 1 2. Um, Rakitic. Moving behind Sergio Ramos, who completely, uh, for, uh, for a split second, forgot that Rakitic is on, he, behind his back and making a full run into a wide open space because Varan had to take Suarez. And uh, Rak Rakitic runs on, on the goals. Um, Sergio Ramos cannot get to him anymore, chips it over the goalkeeper, 1 0 Barcelona. Um, not less, I mean. I didn't feel it was necessarily against the run of play, but you know, um, Real Madrid had more of the game and it remained that open, but then uh, towards the end of the half, Barcelona had more chances and uh, I remember by Suarez that he just needs to get, I mean, he has a clear shot uh, straight ahead of the goal, maybe not outside of the box, but this needs to go in. And yeah, um, then there was this ugly scene with uh, Sergio Ramos being Sergio Ramos and putting an elbow in Messi's face, uh, which caused a lot of um, scuffle at the very end of the first half. It was an interesting game, I gotta say, and I thought that Sergio Ramos will for sure get sent off. I'm not gonna say much, he's not gonna send, get sent off in this game, although he already got a yellow card in the second minute. Uh, very unlikely. But, you know, this elbow... Uh, onto Messi, he got the elbow by Longley in the second half and also uh, on the clearance of Ter Stegen. Ter Stegen makes sure that uh, Ramos gets also a little bit an elbow. So, you know, they kind of evened each other out. But second half, I don't want to say it was all Madrid because Barcelona uh, had a lot of counter, counter, counter chances, but in the first 15 minutes, in the last 5-6 minutes, Real Madrid really attacked Barcelona a lot. And they're toothless in attack. I gotta say, Vinicius Jr., wonderful player, but you always see he has the ball, then he cuts at the inside, and then he makes a shot that is uh, blocked or saved. And may I say that um, 
the defending by Barcelona was awesome. I mean, they made so many blocks. I mean, this almost looked uh, very Italian. Like, um, they really stood well. And whenever Real Madrid was a shot, it seemed like there's two walls of defenders of Barcelona blocking a shot. I mean, Ter Stegen had to only um, get in there once or twice. And this was the whole game. I've never seen Barcelona defend as well and as... Um, passionately in a way throwing themselves in, into a Milan late twice saved with his lower rib from um, Vinicius Jr. and I think the only uh, moment of menace is when Pique uh, got the ball on his box and then decides to dribble across the goal mouth a meter away from from, from, from a goal to, to the uh, corner flag where you don't know what was happening and also, I think Barcelona failed to kill the game off. Um, they had the counter chances that were not taken very well, similar to Milan in, in a way. And they kept uh, Real Madrid hanging in there. But, you know, with such a defensive uh, force, that seemed pretty impressive. And so Barcelona hangs on to the slim 1-0 win, four in a row now at the Bernabeu that they are winning in, in the league. 12 points clear of Real Madrid, currently 10 ahead of Atletico. Atletico still has, has a game to play, but that's not going to be that easy for them either. And then before I go to Northern Europe, let's go even further west. I actually saw, and I think it's the first time in my life, I saw the last, this almost the entire second half of another great match. Another classical. Porto against Benfica. I mean, that makes it four huge games today, uh, which three were sort of par parallel. Porto against Benfica, I mean, it was 1-1 one, one at halftime, and I have not seen much there. Um, but when I turned over, Benfica made it 2-1, and then it became a great game where um, Porto really tried to get it going. Uh, Benfica, for the most part, seemed to be very content. Uh, sitting back, launching counter-attacks, but they were caught out a little bit in their defense. I mean, there were a lot of balls back by Porto behind the line of attack uh, where they could have profited, but they actually didn't. Um, they had chances, uh, but nothing where I would say this was a 100%, maybe one or one at most. Uh, I always had the feeling uh, for the kind of mid-second half that Benfica is going to make it 3-1. And then there was a little scuffle in the 77th where um, Gabriel Piresh puts back, I think it was Octavio or whatever, uh, who, uh, you know, was tackling foul. Uh, Porto wants to play out and so, uh, puts Octavio back. They get at ed 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 and the player, Befica plays immediately, pull him back. The problem was he made the foul and then he pushed down Octavio. And seemingly the referee gave him a yellow and a yellow. Within a min, for the say within five seconds, two yellows sent him off. Was maybe a little bit harsh, and that Otavio got a yellow uh, is a little bit beyond me, especially when uh, another. Uh, what, who, what was his name? Brahimi. Clearly hit a Befica player. So uh, Porto was playing with a man more, but uh, was not enough. Uh, goals Lopez in the 18th minute for Porto 1-0. Uh, Joao Felic uh, makes it in 26th 1-1. And then Rafa was a nicely played ball that went from around the uh, edge of the box in a short corner. In in Befica now for the first time it's uh, first in the league. So it's the Portuguese league is very very intriguing. We have now Befica 59, Porto 57, and Braga with a game in hand. Uh, they can make it 52 tomorrow. So, might be, could, it's probably still between Befica and Porto, but Braga is not entirely out of it. Okay, uh, let's go a little bit further west again. Um, quickly, France, before I forget my French friends, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, 2-1, two late goals by Mbappé, uh, that secured the win. Um, yeah, too late. 
1587, but Carl had the one lead. And I did an experiment today. Uh, yesterday you saw me in PSG shirt. I was wearing it for the almost entire day. I didn't actually know if PSG is playing, playing like that. So I thought, like, yeah, let's see if they lose. No, they didn't. So maybe my superstition is just what I always thought is stupid. Reims Amiens, the duel of the great cathedrals, 2-2 two -two in Orgier, Monaco 2-2 two -two as well. Um, we're gonna look at France. Uh, let's see quickly how it is. Uh, but you know, there's not much happening. I just want to see Monaco. Yeah, there are a lot of relegations on at the moment. Caron is in there. Caron, Dijon, Guigo, Gangon. That's what it looks like. That's uh, the, the three teams that they were relegated. I also have not seen any highlights of the German Bundesliga, but there are two results that stand out uh, Schalke, Dusseldorf, nil four. Cannot believe it. Schalke is absolutely uh, in trouble. Leverkusen bounces back from the loss to Dortmund, 2-0 uh, against Freiburg. Frankfurt beats Hoffenheim 3-2. I see um, two late goals. Hoffenheim had a 2-1 lead. Um, it was Frankfurt 1-0, then Hoffenheim 1-1 uh, at halftime, makes it 2-1. In the 89th and 96th, uh, Frankfurt turns the game around. Mm, it's, I like this. For me, the perfect 3-2 win. You go ahead, go behind, you go ahead again. That's the perfect 3-2. Uh, uh, what I call the perfect 3-2. Uh, gotta watch highlights of that. Hertha, Mainz 2-1, Nürnberg, Leipzig 0-1, and then Gladbach, Bayern. I said it. Gladbach won in Munich 3-0, and they would have been eliminated 5-1 for Bayern. Uh, and yeah, it was 2-1 at halftime, Martinez and Müller making it... Um, Within 11 minutes, already to uh, to nil, Stindl pulls from back and Lewandowski, Gnabry, and Lewandowski with a penalty again makes it 5 1. Let's look at the table. Uh, in Dortmund, still ahead, but <laughs> by just two goals. 54 points both. Uh, Leipzig now in third, 45. Gladbach fourth. Gladbach is dropping off. Yeah, I said it yesterday. Frankfurt temporarily moves in fifth spot. Oh, no, temporarily. Uh, Wolfsburg can overtake them, yes. Leverkusen overtakes Wolfsburg and yeah. Relegation, Stuttgart has to play tomorrow, Hannover has to play tomorrow, Nürnberg doesn't look good for them, so yeah. That's Germany. Schließt us with one more league and uh, that's England and I saw, yeah, half sleeping because uh, it was right at lunchtime and you know, uh, since I stay up so long at the weekend, it's nap time for me. But I had the game on, I was listening while sleeping. So I got to, uh, I got how the game was going and just watched highlights. Uh, the game should have started with a red card for Schalke, who just, with no chance of the ball, goes into Kane. I don't know what the referee saw there. I mean, he didn't even give a yellow. That, that should have been a red card. But then, uh, countering, I mean, it, uh, Spurs. Trying to go forward, but Arsenal control the middle of the park, so they need to go on the side, and this doesn't fit Spurs. And then the uh, Arsenal launches a counter attack, which was not offside. The pass to Ramsey because Ramsey started from his own half, and he has a clear way to goal. Runs Yuris makes it one nil in the 16th minute. Uh, Arsenal had a few chances, but actually Leno saved them uh, also to get the equalizer, and the game got more and more intense, 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 intense. Um, Arsenal having chances, uh, Obama Young even coming on, but Tottenham also. Um, I think Alderweire and Vert no Vertonghen had one, and then uh, Tottenham gets a penalty that also should not have been given because uh, it was a free kick. Kane was offside, Kane is pulled down by Mustafi, that was a foul, but uh, it was an offside, but uh, when you see where the linesman was, there was no chance that he's gonna see that. Uh, so you need VAR England, you really do. Yes, it is a pain in the butt, but uh, yeah. So Kane makes it 1-1, uh, very good penalty. And then in the end, when Tottenham is pressing to make it uh, a win, Arsenal gets a very soft penalty. My understanding, I wouldn't say it was a penalty, but okay. So they get a penalty, but Aubameyang shoots uh, rather weakly, saved by Yoris, and then um, 
also um, the ball came back and I forgot wrong and makes a great uh, save and then actually an Arsenal player Torreira gets sent off for something much less than was happening uh, early in the game. Other Premier League games, uh, Bournemouth, Manchester City, nil one. I saw maybe the last 20, 20 minutes, I was hoping that Bournemouth will make something nap. It was all Manchester City. Manchester City probably should have won by more there. Um, I was amazed. I think it was 14 uh, corners for City and nil for Bournemouth. That's it right there. Brighton uh, against Huddersfield, 1-0. Burnley, Crystal Palace, 1-3. Manchester United, Southampton, only 3-2. Let's quickly see who scored. Uh, Pereira, Lukaku, Lukaku. It was 2-2 at the point, and, it was, and Southampton had a 1-0 lead at halftime. 53rd, 59th, uh, United turns around, but Ward Prowse makes it 2-2, and then Lukaku in the 88th. Oh, I gotta watch those highlights. They're gonna be interesting. Wolves, Cardiff, 2-0, and West Ham beats Newcastle. Mm. 2-0. Let's quickly look at the standings for now. Um, before the derby, Manchester City, of course, is now ahead. But, you know, if uh, Liverpool wins the Merseyside derby, they're they're ahead. Uh, Spurs has now 61 points. United 58, Arsenal 57. So this draw helped United uh, move in fourth. Chelsea playing tomorrow. Um, yeah, best of the rest. Wolves 43, Watford 40, West Ham. Uh, let's see the bottom, that's more interesting. Um, yeah, it's still Cardiff 25, Fulham 17, and Hattos for 14, that's the rare relegated ones. Southampton 27, Burnley 30, and Brighton 30. And Newcastle 31. Those are threatened teams, I would say. Uh, and very quickly, let's look at the German table one more time. Uh, to explain. But yeah, we are very I just wanted to see Schalke. 23 points, uh, just two points ahead of Augsburg, 14. Schalke could get pulled into the duel. That was a lot of talking, and it's very late. Just clock strikes me in the minute. Let know which games you watched. I actually watched more than I thought I would. And it were mostly great games. Um, let me know which games you watched and what you thought about this. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon.